Sack kicks a football from ground level on a level playing field. The ball is in the air for four seconds. State the modelling assumption in the standard projectile model. Calculate the vertical component of the initial velocity of the ball and calculate the maximum height of the ball. The ball lands 52 metres from its original position. Calculate the initial speed of the ball and the angle that the initial velocity makes with the ground. So the assumption is there's no resistance to the motion i.e. the motion, resistance of motion is negative wall. If we draw a diagram, so we've got a ball, we've got initial velocity, it's split into two components, u, x, and u, y, and we've got some sort of projectile motion going here. To find the this component here of the initial velocity, we're going to first of all um, put y is equal to zero, and when t is equal to four. So, using y is equal to u y t minus a half g t squared, we're going to have that zero because it's it's it's, it's um, distance here will be zero. It's got back to the ground will be equal to four u y and a half g times four squared. So it's four here because t is four. So rearranging that, we're going to have four u y the component that I need to find is equal to 8g, so it's half times 16, which is 8. And then ui will be 2 times g, which is 19.6 metres per second. Right. In order to calculate the maximum height, the maximum height will happen when uh, the velocity in this direction is equal to 0. OK, we could use the symmetrical properties, but I will show you that it happens when t is 2, because this total distance is when t is equal to 4. We're going to have that 0 is equal to 19.6 minus gt. Therefore, t will be 19.6 divided by g, which is 2 seconds, and that's what we would expect it to be. So we probably don't need to actually show this part. But to find the actual height, OK, is that we'll put that 2, two into here with my... Uh, vertical component of the velocity that I just calculated in the previous part. So it's 19.6 times 2 minus a half times g times 2 squared and that will give me exactly 20 metres. D. Uh, we've got x is 52 uh, metres, so this distance is 52. t is 4 for that and we know that x is the horizontal component of the velocity, initial velocity times t. So ux will be 52 divided by 4, which gives me 13. Right, and now we have to find the actual speed, the initial speed here. So we can get that by uh, doing the magnitude, so the square root of ux plus uy. Slight mistake there. It should be ux squared and uy squared. So that will be square root of 13 squared plus 19.6 squared, which gives me an initial speed of 23.51, which is 23.5 metres per second. If we now put this into some sort of triangle, where this is the angle that I need to find for the direction, OK, so this component is 19.6, which we'll put here. This component is 13, which we'll put here. And then we can find theta is 10 to the minus 1 of 19.6 divided by 3, which will give me 56.445, which will give me 56.4 degrees. Now, you might think there might be another angle, but for that other angle, the time in the air will not actually be 4 seconds. So there's only one possible answer, which is 56.4 degrees. OK, so it's been a video uh, to show you how to find the initial velocity, initial speed and the direction a ball is travelling. I hope you've understood and I thank you very much for watching.